The Swift Programming Language 5.6 edition, book copyrighted by Apple and made available under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Advanced Operators In addition to the operators described in Basic Operators, Swift provides several advanced operators that perform more complex value manipulation. These include all of the bitwise and bit shifting operators you will be familiar with from C and Object of C. Unlike arithmetic operators in C, arithmetic operators in Swift do not overflow by default. Overflow behavior is trapped and reported as an error. To opt in to overflow behavior, use Swift's second set of arithmetic operators that overflow by default, such as the overflow addition operator. All of these overflow operators begin with an ampersand. When you define your own structures, classes, and enumerations, it can be useful to provide your own implementations of the standard Swift operators for these custom types. Swift makes it easy to provide tailored implementations of these operators and to determine exactly what their behavior should be for each type you create. You are not limited to the predefined operators. Swift gives you the freedom to define your own custom infix, prefix, postfix, and assignment operators with custom precedence and associativity values. These operators can be used and adopted in your code like any of the predefined operators, and you can even extend existing types to support the custom operators you define. Bitwise operators enable you to manipulate the individual raw bits within a data structure. They are often used in low-level programming, such as graphics programming and device driver creation. Bitwise operators can also be useful when you work with raw data from external sources, such as encoding and decoding data for communication over a custom protocol. Swift supports all of the bitwise operators found in C, as described below. The bitwise not operator inverts all bits in a number. The bitwise not operator is a prefix operator and appears immediately before the value it operates on without any white space. Uint 8 integers have 8 bits and can store any value between 0 and 255. This example initializes a Uint 8 integer with the binary value 00001111, which has its first 4 bits set to 0 and its second 4 bits set to 1. This is equivalent to a decimal value of 15. The bitwise not operator is then used to create a new constant called inverted bits, which is equal to initial bits, but with all of the bits inverted. Zeros become ones, and ones become zeros. The value of inverted bits is 11110000, which is equal to an unsigned decimal value of 240. The bitwise AND operator, the ampersand, combines the bits of two numbers. It returns a new number whose bits are set to one only if the bits are, were equal to one in both input numbers. In this example, the values of first six bits and last six bits both have four middle bits equal to one. The bitwise AND operator combines them to make the debt number 00111100, which is equal to an unsigned decimal value of 60. The bitwise OR operator, the vertical bar, compares the bits of two numbers. The operator returns a new number whose bits are set to one if the bits are equal to one in either input number. In this example, the values of some bits and more bits have different bits set to one. The bitwise OR operator combines them to make the number 11111110, which equals an unsigned decimal of 254. The bitwise exclusive OR operator, or caret symbol, compares the bits of two numbers. The operator returns a new number whose bits are set to 1, where the input bits are different, and are set to 0, where the input bits are the same. In this example, the values of first bits and other bits each have a bit set to 1 in a location that the other does not. The bitwise exclusive OR operator sets both of these bits to 1 in its output value. All of the other bits in first bits and other bits match, and are set to 0 in the output value. The bitwise left shift operator and bitwise right shift operator move all bits in a number to the left or the right by a certain number of places according to the rules defined below. Bitwise left and right shifts have the effect of multiplying or dividing an integer by a factor of 2. Shifting an integer's bits to the left by one position doubles its value, 
whereas shifting it to the right by one position halves its value. Shifting behavior for unsigned integers. The bit shifting behavior for unsigned integers is as follows. Existing bits are moved to the left or right by the requested number of places. Any bits that are moved beyond the bounds of the integer's storage are discarded. Zeros are inserted in the spaces left behind after the original bits are moved to the left or right. This approach is known as a logical shift. The illustration shown here shows the results of shifting 8 bits to the left by one place and 8 bits to the right by one place. Blue numbers are shifted, gray numbers are discarded, and orange zeros are inserted. Here's how the bit shifting looks in Swift code. You can use bit shifting to encode and decode values within other data types. This example uses a uint32 constant called pink to store a cascading style sheet's color value for the color pink. The CSS color value CC6699 is written in hexadecimal representation. This color is then decomposed into its red, green, and blue components by the bitwise AND operator and the bitwise right shift operator. The red component is obtained by performing a bitwise AND between the pink numbers and FF0000 in hexadecimal. The zeros in FF0000 effectively mask the second and third bytes of CC6699, causing the 6699 to be ignored and leaving 0xCC0000 as the result. This number is then shifted 16 places to the right. Each pair of characters in a hexadecimal number uses 8 bits, so a move 16 places to the right will convert 0xCC0000 into 0x0000CC. This is the same as 0xCC, which has a decimal value of 204. Similarly, the green component is obtained by performing a bitwise AND between the numbers 0xCC6699 and 0x00FF. 00, which gives an output value of 0x006600. This output is then shifted eight places to the right, giving a value of 0x66, which has a decimal value of 102. Finally, the blue component is obtained by performing a bitwise AND between the numbers 0xcc6699 and 0x0000ff, which gives an output value of 0x000099. Because 0x000099 already equals 0x99, which has a decimal value of 153, this value is used without shifting it to the right. Shifting behavior for signed integers. The shifting behavior is more complex for signed integers than for unsigned integers because of the way signed integers are represented in binary. The examples shown here are based on 8-bit signed integers for simplicity, but the same principles apply for signed integers of any size. Signed integers use their first bit, known as the sign bit, to indicate whether the integer is positive or negative. A sign bit of 0 means positive, and a sign bit of 1 means negative. The remaining bits, known as the value bits, store the actual value. Positive numbers are stored in exactly the same way as for unsigned integers, counting upwards from 0. Here's how the bits inside an int 8 look for the number 4. The sign bit is 0, meaning positive, and the 7 value bits are just the number 4, written in binary notation. Negative numbers, however, are stored differently. They are stored by subtracting their absolute value from 2 to the power of n, where n is the number of value bits. An 8-bit number has 7 value bits, so this means 2 to the power of 7, or 128. Here's how the bits inside an int 8 look for the number negative 4. This time, the sign bit is 1, meaning negative, and the 7 value bits have a binary value of 124, which is 128 minus 4. This encoding for negative numbers is known as a 2's complement representation. It may seem an unusual way to represent negative numbers, but it has several advantages. First, 
you can add negative 1 to negative 4 simply by performing a standard binary addition of all 8 bits including the sign bit and discarding anything that does not fit in the 8 bits once you are done. Second, the 2's complement representation also lets you shift the bits of negative numbers to the left and right like positive numbers and still end up doubling them for every shift you make to the left or having them for every shift you make to the right. To achieve this, an extra rule is used when signed integers are shifted to the right. When you shift signed integers to the right, apply the same rules as for unsigned integers, but fill any empty bits on the left with the sign bit rather than zero. This action ensures that signed integers have the same sign after they are shifted to the right and is known as an arithmetic shift. Because of the special way that positive and negative numbers are stored, shifting either of them to the right moves them closer to zero. Keeping the sign bit the same during this shift means that negative integers remain negative as their value moves closer to zero. Overflow operators. If you try to insert a number into an integer constant or variable that cannot hold that value, by default Swift reports an error rather than allowing an invalid value to be created. This behavior gives extra safety when you work with numbers that are too large or too small. For example, the int 16 integer type can hold any signed integer between negative 32,768 and 32,767. Trying to set an int 16 constant or variable to a number outside of this range causes an error. Providing error handling when values get too large or too small gives you much more flexibility when coding for boundary value conditions. However, when you specifically want an overflow condition to truncate the number of available bits, you can opt into this behavior rather than triggering an error. Swift provides three arithmetic overflow operators that opt into the overflow behavior for integer calculations. These integers all begin with an ampersand. Overflow addition, ampersand plus. Overflow subtraction, ampersand minus. Overflow multiplication, ampersand asterisk. Value overflow. Numbers can overflow in both the positive and negative direction. Here is an example of what happens when an unsigned integer is allowed to overflow in the positive direction using the overflow addition operator. The variable unsigned overflow is initialized with the maximum value a uint8 can hold, 255 or 8 binary ones. It is then incremented by 1 using the overflow addition operator. This pushes its binary representation to just over the size that a uint8 can hold, causing it to overflow beyond its bounds as shown in this diagram. The value that remains within the bounds of the uint8 after the overflow addition is 8 binary zeros, or 0. Something similar happens when an unsigned integer is allowed to overflow in the negative direction. Here is an example of using the overflow subtraction operator. The minimum value an uint8 can hold is 0, or 8 zeros in binary. If you subtract 1 from 8 zeros using the overflow subtraction operator, the number will overflow and wrap around to 8 binary ones, or 255 in decimal. Overflow also occurs for signed integers. All addition and subtraction for signed integers is performed in bitwise fashion, with the sign bit included as part of the numbers being added or subtracted, as described in bitwise left and right shift operators. The minimum value that an int 8 can hold is negative 128, or 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, in binary. Subtracting 1 from this binary number with the overflow operator gives a binary value of 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, which toggles the sign bit and gives positive 127, the maximum positive value that an int 8 can hold. For both signed and unsigned integers, overflow in the positive direction wraps around from the maximum valid integer value back to the minimum, and overflow in the negative direction wraps around from the minimum value to the maximum. Precedence and associativity. Operator precedence gives some operators higher priority than others. These operators are applied first. Operator associativity defines how operators of the same precedence are grouped together, either grouped to the left or grouped from the right. Think of it as meaning they associate with the expression to their left or they associate with the expression to their right. It is important to consider each operator's precedence and associativity when working out the order in which a compound expression will be calculated. For example, operator precedence explains why the following expression equals 17. 
If you read strictly from left to right, you might expect the expression to be calculated as follows. 2 plus 3 equals 5. 5 remainder 4 equals 1. 1 times 5 equals 5. However, the actual answer is 17, not 5. Higher precedence operators are evaluated before lower precedence ones. In Swift, as in C, the remainder operator and the multiplication operator have a higher precedence than the addition operator. As a result, they are both evaluated before the addition is considered. However, remainder and multiplication have the same precedence as each other. To work out the exact evaluation order to use, you also need to consider their associativity. Remainder and multiplication both associate with the expression to their left. Think of this as adding implicit parentheses around these parts of these, the expression, starting from their left. 3 remainder 4 times 5 plus 2. 3 remainder 4 is 3, so this is equivalent to 3 times 5 plus 2, or 2 plus 15. This calculation yields the final answer of 17. For information about the operators provided by the Swift Standard Library, including a complete list of the operator precedence groups and associative settings, see Operator Declarations. Note, Swift's operator precedences and associativity rules are simpler and more predictable than those found in C and Objective-C. However, this means that they are not exactly the same as in C-based languages. Be careful to ensure that operator interactions will still behave in the way you intend when porting existing code to Swift. Operator methods. Classes and structures can provide their own implementations of existing operators. This is known as overloading the existing operators. This example shows how to implement the arithmetic addition operator for a custom structure. The arithmetic addition operator is a binary operator because it operates on two targets and it is an infix operator because it appears between those two targets. This example defines a vector 2D structure for a two-dimensional position vector x and y, followed by the definition of an operator method to add together instances of the vector 2D structure. The operator method is defined as a type method on vector 2D with a method name that matches the operator to be overloaded. Plus, because addition is not part of the essential behavior for a vector, the type method is defined in an extension of vector 2D rather than in the main structure declaration of vector 2D. Because the arithmetic addition operator is a binary operator, this operator takes two input parameters of type vector 2D and returns a single output value also of type vector 2D. In this implementation, the input parameters are named left and right to represent the vector 2D instances that will be on the left side and right side of the plus operator. The method returns a new vector 2D instance whose X and Y properties are initialized with the sum of the X and Y properties from the two vector 2D instances that are added together. The type method can be used as an infix operator between existing vector 2D instances. This example adds together the vectors 3, 1 and 2, 4 to make the vector 5, 5 as illustrated here. Prefix and postfix operators. The example shown previously demonstrates a custom implementation of a binary infix operator. Classes and structures can also provide implementations of the standard unary operators. Unary operators operate on a single target. They are prefix if they precede their target, such as minus A, and postfix operators if they follow their target, such as B exclamation mark. You implement a prefix or postfix unary operator by writing the prefix or postfix modifier before the func keyword when declaring the operator method. This example implements the unary minus operator for vector 2D instances. The unary minus operator is a prefix operator and so this method has to be qualified with the prefix modifier. For simple numeric values, the unary minus operator converts positive numbers into their negative equivalent and vice versa. The corresponding implementation for vector 2D instances performs this operation on both the X and Y properties. Compound assignment operators. Compound assignment operators combine assignment with another operation. For example, the addition assignment operator combines addition and assignment into a single operation. You mark a compound assignment operator's left input parameter type as in out because the parameter's value will be modified directly from within the operator method. 
This example implements an addition assignment operator method for vector 2D instances. Because an addition operator was defined earlier, you do not need to re-implement the addition process here. Instead, the addition assignment operator method takes advantage of the existing addition operator method and uses it to set the left value to be the left value plus the right value. Note, it is not possible to overload the default assignment operator. Only the compound assignment operators can be overloaded. Similarly, the ternary conditional operator cannot be overloaded. Equivalence operators. By default, custom classes and structures do not have an implementation of the equivalence operators known as the equal to operator and the not equal to operator. You usually implement the equal to operator and use the standard library's default implementation of the not equal to operator that negates the result of the equal to operator. There are two ways to implement the equal to operator. You can implement it yourself, or for many types, you can ask Swift to synthesize an implementation for you. In both cases, you add conformance to the standard library's equatable protocol. You provide an implementation of the equal to operator in the same way that you implement other infix operators. This example implements an equal to operator to check whether two vector 2D instances have equivalence values. In the context of vector 2D, it makes sense to consider equal as meaning both instances have the same x values and y values, and so this is the logic used by the operator implementation. You can now use this operator to check whether two vector 2D instances are equivalent. In many cases, you can ask Swift to provide synthesized implementations of the equivalence operators for you as described in adopting a protocol using a synthesized implementation. Custom operators. You can declare and implement your own custom operators in addition to the standard operators provided by Swift. For a list of characters that can be used to define custom operators, see operators. New operators are declared at the global level using the operator keyword and are marked with prefix, infix, or postfix modifiers. This example defines a new prefix operator called plus plus plus. This operator does not have an existing meaning in Swift, and so it is given its own custom meaning here in the specific contents of working with vector 2D instances. For the purposes of this example, plus 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 is treated as a new prefix doubling operator. It doubles the X and Y values of a vector 2D instance by adding the vector to itself with the addition assignment operator defined previously. To implement the plus 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 operator, you add a type method called plus 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 to vector 2D as shown here. Precedence for custom infix operators. Custom infix operators each belong to a precedence group. A precedence group specifies an operator's precedence relative to the other infix operators as well as the operator's associativity. See precedence and associativity for an explanation of how these characteristics affect an infix operator's interaction with other infix operators. A custom infix operator that is not explicitly placed into a precedence group is given a default precedence group with a precedence immediately higher than the precedence of the ternary conditional operator. The following example defines a new custom infix operator called plus minus, which belongs to the precedence group addition precedence. This operator adds together the x values of two vectors and subtracts the y value of the second vector from the first. Because it is in essence an additive operator, it has been given the same precedence group as additive infix operators such as plus and minus. For more information about the operators provided by the Swift Standard Library, including a complete list of the operator precedence groups and associativity settings, see Operator Declarations. For more information about precedence groups and to see the syntax for defining your own operators and precedence groups, see Operator Declaration. Note, you do not specify a precedence when defining a prefix or postfix operator. However, if you apply both a prefix and a postfix operator to the same operand, the postfix operator is applied first. A result builder is a type you define that adds syntax for creating nested data, like a list or tree, in a natural declarative way. The code that uses the result builder can include ordinary Swift syntax, like if and for, to handle conditional or repeated pieces of data. This code defines a few types for drawing on a single line using stars and text. The drawable protocol defines the requirement for something that can be drawn like a line or a shape, 
the type must implement a draw method. The line structure represents a single line drawing and it serves the top level container for most drawings. To draw a line, the structure calls draw on each of the line's components and then concatenates the resulting strings into a single string. The text st structure wraps a string to make it part of a drawing. The all caps structure wraps and modifies another drawing, converting any text in the drawing to uppercase. It is possible to make a drawing with these types by calling their initializers. This code works, but it is a little awkward. The deeply nested parentheses after all caps are hard to read. The fallback logic to use world when name is nil has to be done inline using the nil coalescing operator, which would be difficult with anything more complex. If you needed to include switches or for loops to build up part of the drawing, there is no way to do that. A result builder lets you rewrite code like this so that it looks like normal Swift code. To define a result builder, you write the at result builder attribute on a type declaration. For example, this code defines a result builder called drawing builder, which lets you use a declarative syntax to describe a drawing. The drawing builder structure defines three methods that implement part of the result builder syntax. The build block method adds support for writing a series of lines in a block of code. It combines the components of that block into a line. The build either first and build either second methods add support for if else. You can apply the drawing builder attribute to a function's parameter, which turns a closure pass to the function into the value that the result builder creates from that closure. Here is an example. The make greeting for function takes a name parameter and uses it to draw a personalized greeting. The draw and caps functions both take a single closure as their argument, which is marked with the drawing builder attribute. When you call those functions, you use the special syntax that drawing builder defines. Swift transforms that declarative description of a drawing into a series of calls to the methods on drawing builder to build up the value that is passed as the function argument. For example, Swift transforms the call to caps in that example into code like this. Swift transforms the if else block into calls to the build either first and build either second methods. Although you don't call these methods in your own code, showing the result of the transformation makes it easier to see how Swift transforms your code when you use the drawing builder syntax. To add support for writing for loops in the special drawing syntax, add a build array method. In this code, the for loop creates an array of drawings and the build array method turns that array into a line. For a complete list of how Swift transform builder syntax into calls to the builder's types method, see result builder.